Chapter 16 is definitely a fun chapter to read and to implement. It's talking about promotion to sell your goods. It works business to consumer, the buyer, or business to business. And they have the mix here where you are trying to sell your stuff. You do need a budget with advertising, personal selling, public relations, sales promotion. The personal selling is the person selling it. You might have to pay a salary or a commission to that person. Advertising, you will pay for it. Public relations, they can get you in the news because you're doing something that is a really cool product, something that is encouraging people to buy things. And it talks about integrated marketing communication. Sounds a little complex. But it's just really where you're creating a positive brand image, meeting needs of the consumers, and your marketing and promotional goals. And then you have steps in a campaign. You want to identify the market. If you're selling handbags, it's women, okay? And let's say it's a coach handbag. You would want to identify women making enough money. Um, you might even go into regions there where you look at the zip code, like Beverly Hills 90210. You want to have a unified message, implement it, evaluate the effectiveness. You can evaluate the effectiveness by seeing how many of these purses you're selling. And it's talking about some brilliant marketing ideas, some of these uh, you might not have been around for. And it talks about the Marlboro Man. They have not advertised on TV in many, many years. And it was like with Claire All, does she or doesn't she? Um, it was a shock ad. It was just saying, does she color her hair or does she not? And the diamond is forever is an emotional thing because you're buying an engagement ring for your loved one meaning the marriage is going to be forever advertising you see this all the time whether it's on the internet radio tv and their goals are to get you to buy but they're also to persuade inform and remind you of the product We spend billions on advertising. It keeps the cost down of a magazine, a TV show, whatever. And of course, when they're putting a commercial, they want it to be geared towards the person. For example, they might want to do beer ads, potato chip ads, when it's a football game. Uh, if it's a show on dieting or exercise, they're going to be showing things more appropriate to it, such as diet soda. You have a lot of categories in advertising, retail, which is what we're mostly familiar with, but you got the trade, business to business, institutional, hospitals buy a lot of products. Uh, you got a product category, whether it's a cell phone, band-aids, vitamins, whatever. And you could have advocacy where you want people, you could advertise a cause. It could be for the environment. It could be for animal safety, child safety. You know what I'm saying. Interactive, where they can choose what information to receive. Online, a lot of it out there as well as on your cell phones. I'm sure you might be getting a text message to buy XYZ product. And you can see TV is the largest one, followed by, believe it or not, direct mail. I don't know the year of this. Um, newspapers are going down. Radio, magazines, outdoor. Outdoor is billboards, directories. You know how you probably get these little uh, phone books by your mailbox every few weeks. Those are directories. People still use them. I personally use them too. I'm saving one from over 10 years ago, a phone book, because if I need a plumber or something like that and they're still in business 10 years later, you know they're good. Direct mail does work. People do it. It can be very expensive with postage, cost of paper, buying the list. Um, they say you should do more than one. You gotta remember, I did have a background in advertising. I worked for a marketing agency for seven years and it's just talking about some things here again these are old things it takes a licking and keeps on ticking i believe that was timex watch good to the last drop maxwell house coffee can't eat one lays potato chips 
these go back to when I was a kid, probably before that. You might want to ask your parents or grandparents about these. And they've used dogs in advertising. It's been popular. Going with Nipper with RCA, that's definitely before our time. But you've seen ones like with Taco Bell and the Chihuahua. Animals do, and what's the word? They attract people. People like them, okay? Um, advertising media, again, TV. But people are DVRing things to skip the ads and what they're doing. They're putting product placement. If you see that picture there, you could see Coca-Cola there. And, of course, the movie makers or TV makers are getting paid for that. And it talks about something not quite the NFL. If you're advertising and you're starting out, you might want to consider other forms here. And it just talks about these, the demographics. It costs a lot less. You can reach people. You're not going to reach 30 million people. You might reach 30,000 people. Uh, these are hypothetical numbers, but it will get your product across. Infomercials, you might have seen those where it goes on for half an hour talking about some skin cream that's going to make you look 20 years younger or something that will help you to lose 40 pounds and become incredibly gorgeous. Talks about some of the biggest popular things here and Personally, I don't buy anything advertised on TV. I am really not a TV person, but we've all heard of the George Foreman grill. And you can buy those, I think, in any store. I think I've seen them in Walmart. And it's all about online. You're selling online. A lot of people are doing that now. Make sure it's easy to do the purchasing. That's what I will say. Make it quick, responsible, and I will say, Look at what Amazon is doing. They've got a great website. And then with tweeting, some celebrities will tweet about, I don't know, some beautiful hand towel or dish towel that they bought, and everybody wants to run out and buy it. it talks about the ethics again. Ethics runs rampant through this book here. And when you see any celebrities, especially when it's for a watch, an article of clothing or something like that, you're paying for that person, whether it's Tiger Woods or whatever, for their endorsement of the product. If you want it, fine. But realize you're paying for it. And they do advertising on Facebook. They tweet. And I guess it is effective. I have personally never bought anything off of a Facebook ad. Some of you might have because it just mentioned a product. One thing I will say, and if you're a marketer, you have a product. Facebook is a very inexpensive way to widen your audience. You could do it within your zip code, an age group, a demographic. So it is something really worth looking at if you are starting a business. And it talks about scammers. I'm not going to talk about that too much, but be very careful. And if you hover your mouse over the website and something, you think it's from Amazon, it might be, say, ripyouoff.com. Be careful. Oreos, very popular. One of my favorite cookies. It's a global product now. And they put lots of different things in them, depending on the market. And it's also with the global advertising. What might work good in America might not work too good in another country due to cultural differences. Make sure things are properly translated and work within the cultural norms of that country. Personal selling. It's not like the door-to-door -door salesman, but when you're in a high-end store, you're buying a car, you are dealing with personal selling. You're dealing with the sales rep. And a lot of times their personality, their knowledge, and more will help seal the deal with you. Or if you're the sales agent, it'll help you seal the deal with the customer. And it's just saying like you're selling the cars. We're seeing one there. You want to prospect the person. You see something that looks like they got a nickel to their name and you're selling a Mercedes. They're probably not the best, but you never know. Just because somebody is a little bit ragtag looking... They could be richer than you know who. Howard Hughes was very wealthy, one of the wealthiest men of his time, and he always looked like he fell out of a truck. And you have to present 
answer questions, objections, file up, trial close. That really moves them towards the purchase that they're going to buy that car, buy that widget. And what it is here, it's talking about prospecting them, choosing those who will buy, qualify them. If you're co coming to me, I don't have the money to buy a Rolls Royce. And then a prospect is one who meets the qualifying criteria. I might need to buy a pair of sneakers that's in my price range and they could see me with a torn pair of shoes. They're going to say, this guy is a good prospect. And it talks about selling strategies, differentiating from others, sell to those most likely to buy. And a lot of times you could have a good relationship. Um, some people go to the same person at Lord and Taylor all the time to keep buying things because that person knows what your desires are. They might even call you and say, we've got a really nice aqua dress. You were talking about that three weeks ago. And make sure if you are in sales, it can be a great occupation for people. You have to have the right personality, the demeanor there, but you've got to really be yourself. And, and being properly prepared, and if you do have a relationship with the client, again, I'm talking about business to business, you've got to realize this company's buying from you. You've got to take care of that relationship it means knowing the person, connecting with them so that they will keep buying you, and also being really dependable. If you say they're going to have it delivered next Thursday, they get it next Thursday. And these are steps in the business to consumer selling process. Very great staircase there showing the whole process. And do follow up because they might buy another one from you. Public relations, getting yourself in the news. You might be on Yahoo. You might be on the channel, the 10 o'clock news tonight. You might end up in a newspaper, a magazine. And it's doing that whole process. It's a growing field. I'm meeting more and more people who are majoring in that. It is a skill to be learned. And when you're doing the PR, you can get publicity about either the individual product or organization, and it's free. A lot of people find it more believable than the advertising, especially if they write a story in the magazine about this catering service that is out, how they can work with organic people, people with um, dietary habits, but they can do a whole combination thing where people don't know that it actually is a vegan dinner that you're preparing disadvantages you don't know how it's going to come out we've seen a couple of things in the past few years where it has backfired uh, because something happened in the news before um, no further comment on that you can figure that out for yourself sales promotions b2b that would be at a trade show i've been to a few business trade shows consumer trade shows where they're doing promotions where they want you to sell their product and they'll say they'll offer some kind of a deal you know buy a thousand of these things here and we'll do xyz or we'll give you a special display case there they do consumer sales promotions in many ways where you can sample the product you go into Stu leonard's they're always having you sample the food and hopes you'll buy it and been there more than once and yes i do end up buying something if it tastes good or that I just end up getting lunch. And it talks about the techniques in the sales promotion, like if it's B2C, um, the sampling premium sweepstakes here, buy one, get one free, special events, the B2B, the trade shows, deals, they do things at conventions. And these are key things for consumers. Again, some nice cups of some juice or some soda. Sampling is very effective. Costs money, you have to pay somebody to be there. But if people like the product, they're much more apt to buy it if it tastes good, especially if it's a $12 item like a, I don't know, some kind of an organic juice. They give you a one ounce sample, you say it's good, you buy the container. Word of mouth. 
works in these things here. For example, I have work on my car. I always speak very well about the person. It's a small shop with only three employees, but they're good people. I tell people to go there, and I got a recommendation from my friend over 10 years ago to go to him. Same thing with a hairstylist. Anything. You want a satisfied computer. I would say a highly satisfied computer, and aim for that. And it talks about Yelp. This is my personal opinion, and you can see this in the third bullet point. I don't like them. I don't trust them. They were shaking down people to so you would advertise on it. I like TripAdvisor for restaurants, hotels. It's a lot more honest. People identify themselves. and But you do have to respond. You can do um, comments on Google, also on Facebook. People can trash you on a Facebook page if you have a business page. You do need an online presence. Viral marketing. A lot of times you could pay people to do things here. Uh, they could do a blog or whatever. And swag is like freebies, like tickets, shirts, merchandise. And these reviews you see, sometimes you have to take them with a grain of salt. But again, if it's a celebrity, people will want to say because so-and-so marketed it. You could also turn somebody off, like, I don't want to name names, but if I say Kim Kardashian, I personally would not want anything she endorsed. But you might really admire the person. You might admire the entire family, and you're going to buy whatever she tweets about. Blogs, I was talking about that they review. A lot of times they get paid for that. Podcasting, multimedia. You can do email, and I'm sure you've gotten at least one email selling something. It talks about the mobile, going on the smartphone and text. And some of them will even send you a text while you're in the store, which is what I find annoying, and I leave my phone in the car. But it's working with the younger generation who likes that type of stuff. You've got the push, pull, and pick strategies the push it's like they're trying to push it on you pull you're directing heavy advertising and sales promotions towards the consumer and getting them to request your products from retailers you just saw this thing about this great Oreo cookie bar but you don't find it in the stores you're gonna say hey Acme market I want to start buying that and the pick economy that's consumers who pick out their products online 